For almost 40 years, the big four railway companies and British Rail turned out hundreds of powerful locomotives. These were truly the titans of steam. And some, such as the Flying Scotsman and Sir Nigel Gresley, became household names. This program looks at the mighty engines which survived the demise of steam and found a new lease of life on preserved railways all over Britain. The Southern Railway came into being in 1923, when most of Britain's disparate railway companies were grouped together into the Big Four. Richard Maunsell was appointed Chief Mechanical Engineer. His main objective was a program of standardization to reduce the vast number of classes which he had inherited. More big engines were needed, and an existing design of 460 was taken as the basis for the new N15, or King Arthur class. The first 20 were built in 1925 by the North British Locomotive Company. Sir Lamuel is one of the batch from North British, which were often referred to as Scotch Arthurs. Here at Crewe, she prepares for a run along the North Wales coast. Maunsell needed an even more powerful locomotive, which could handle the 500-ton Continental Expresses. He eventually settled on a four-cylinder 460, and the Lord Nelson was introduced in 1926. At the time, these were the largest ten-wheelers in Britain, but only the prototype has survived. Oliver Bullied succeeded Monsell in 1938. This impatient extrovert was also an engineering genius, and many believe that his steam engines were the most advanced ever built in Britain. Bullied's first job was to develop the express passenger locomotive for which he produced a totally new design, the air-smoothed Merchant Navy Pacific. Hiding behind the mask, is Canadian Pacific, built in 1942 and now based at Loughborough. These large Pacifics gained a reputation as fast, free-steaming engines, but their unorthodox features and unconventional design prompted British Rail to rebuild them in the mid-1950s.
1945, the first of Bullied's light Pacifics appeared. These were similar in appearance to his earlier merchant navies, but were designed for routes which demanded a lighter axle loading. The West Country class took their names from their main area of operation. Sixty-six were built between 1945 and 1950. These preserved examples are from the Worth Valley, Mid Hans, Great Central, and North York Moors Railways. Many of the class were later rebuilt and the streamlining was removed. The Battle of Britain class was essentially the same as the West Country, but the Southern Railway decided to split them for publicity reasons. 44 were built, including the Swanage Railway's 257 squadron. In 1902, George Jackson Churchward was appointed superintendent of the Great Western Railway, and so began the most significant period of locomotive design. His achievement in standardization was only matched by Sir William Stanier with the LMS. In 1903, the 2800 class appeared, the first in Britain with a 280 wheel arrangement. This class of 167 engines must rank amongst the most successful heavy freight locomotives ever built, and for a period of 60 years, they were responsible for most of the long-distance heavy freight in the Great Western region. Number 2857, now on the Severn Valley, was built in 1918. She covered more than a million miles over a 45-year working career. The Great Western was always partial to its tank engines. The 4500 class was a large 262 tank which Churchward introduced in 1906 for branch line passenger work.
These examples reside on the Severn Valley and the West Somerset Railways. But there were once more than 170 engines operating on most parts of the Great Western system. Charles Collett took over in 1922. During his 20 years in the post, he concentrated on the development and expansion of Churchill's designs, creating the castles and the kings, the mainstay of express motive power virtually to the end of steam. The castle class was introduced in 1923 for express passenger work. These four-cylinder ten-wheelers were both powerful and light making them one of the most successful locomotives ever built. Number 50880, Defiant, is still very popular with enthusiasts. Here at Birmingham, the driver experience course is fully booked. Volumes have been written in praise of the kings. These magnificent machines were the ultimate development of the Great Western four-cylinder ten-wheeler. When introduced in 1927, it was the most powerful locomotive in the country. King Edward I was built in 1930 and is still a star performer on the main line. Churchward had initially considered the hall design, 
but the work was done by Collett, and this class of ten-wheelers was introduced in 1928. The halls were developed from the earlier Saint class and provided a powerful general-purpose engine. The Seven Valleys Raveningham Hall is a modified version of the class which appeared in 1944. Dumbleton Hall is one of the original class seen here on the Gloucestershire and Warwickshire Railway. As maids of all work, the halls remained in service until the end of steam. The Manor class was introduced in 1938. These examples are seen on the Severn Valley, Clamgochlin, West Somerset and Paynton Dartmouth Railways. The Manor was another general purpose ten-wheeler with a light axle load which gave access to the routes barred to the halls. It was based upon Churchwood's earlier mixed traffic moguls. These locomotives were Collins' last, but they steamed badly, and initially they appeared to be his least successful design. British Rail later solved the problem by improving the drafting.
Sir Henry Fowler, chief mechanical engineer of the new London, Midland and Scottish Railway, was also responsible for the motive power of the Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway. In 1914, he produced a new design of 280 for its steeply graded main line. In 1925, he added an extra five engines to the class, all with larger boilers. 7F number 53809 now operates on the Midland Railway. On the West Somerset Railway, sister engine, number 88, has been restored to her original livery. In 1932, Sir William Stanier became chief mechanical engineer of the LMS. One of his first tasks was to produce reliable mixed traffic locomotives. In 1933, he introduced a 260 mixed traffic locomotive. Forty of these moguls were built and they worked well on heavy freight and excursion trains. Today, number 2968 still caters for day trippers on the Severn Valley Railway. The tapered boiler shows some of the Great Western influence which Stanier brought to the LMS. Stanier followed up the moguls with his Jubilee class. These ten wheelers appeared in 1934, the year of the Jubilee of King George V. Bahamas, number 45596, is now a star performer on the Keithley and Worth Valley Line. These simple three-cylinder engines were based upon Fowler's Patriot class. Almost 200 were built, and they soon proved themselves to be extremely versatile express engines. They took on the majority of mainline work, apart from the heaviest toppling jobs.
Great Central Railway, the early experimental black and chromium livery of Silver Jubilee is recreated on Collapore. Preservation livery can even include Thomas the Tank Engine. The LMS Mainline Express Maroon was derived from the old Midland Crimson. Stanier then turned his attention to the need for a standard heavy freight engine. His 8000 or 8F class 280 was introduced in 1935 and amply met all that was required of it. At the outbreak of the Second World War, the 8F was adopted as a standard type for the needs of the War Department. Number 8233 was built for the LMS in 1940. She served in Iran during the war, returning to Britain to work the military railway at Longbar. She was rescued by the Stania 8F Locomotive Society and now works on the Seven Valley. Stania's first express engine was the Princess, built in 1933, the first Pacific types to run on the LMS. They worked well, and improvements of this design led to the acclaimed Coronation class. Number 46229, the Duchess of Hamilton, was built in 1938 and now belongs to the National Railway Museum. The Coronation class locos proved themselves to be magnificent engines, not only in terms of speed, but also in their ability to handle the very heaviest express trains on the West Coast main line. In 1939, the Duchess was exhibited in New York and then toured North America. She became one of Britain's best loved locomotives. Very wide firebox, 54 square feet of grate, and a working pressure of 250 pounds per square inch. Um, very few engines in this country were fitted in the tender with coal pushers. This one has got a coal pusher. There's a steam shut-off valve on the back head here. Goes via a flexible pipe to the tender, and then an actuating handle here that operates quite a massive ram in the tender. <laughs>
the London and North Eastern Railway inherited a wide range of locomotives from its predecessors. In 1911, the Great Eastern Railway introduced the 1500 class, which became the LNER B12. These engines worked so well that production continued under the LNER and the B12 had a lifespan of 50 years. Number 8572 gets pride of place on the North Norfolk Railway. Built in 1928, this is the world's only surviving example of an inside cylinder 460. Well, we'll keep using it. Eight five seven two was saved for preservation, but had to wait over thirty years for restoration. Finally, returning to traffic in 1995. The B-12 was a class that deserved its fine reputation. They were always appreciated by their crews, they rode beautifully and put out power beyond all proportion to their size. Nigel Gresley became the first chief mechanical engineer of the LNER. This outstanding locomotive designer was to hold the office for 18 years and was responsible for the big engine policy which was so much a feature of the railway. Gresley's A1 Pacific, later reclassified as A3, was introduced in 1922 for the Great Northern Railway. The third of these Flying Scotsman was completed after the absorption by the LNER in 1923 and became one of the most famous steam locomotives of all time. Here on the Flangochland Railway, she provides the ultimate in driver experience courses.
was it like? Fantastic. It takes a lot more skill than most people realise to drive a steam locomotive, and the crew here have taught me a great deal in the last two hours. It's not just a question of a kettle on wheels and shoveling coal in, hoping for the best. It takes a fine touch, if you'll pardon the expression. In 1935, Gresley built four three-cylinder Class A4 Pacifics for the East Coast Express. They were the first British streamlined engines and were soon supplemented by 30 more, including the Union of South Africa and Mallard. Mallard holds the world speed record for steam traction. In 1938, she achieved 126 miles per hour. It's a fitting tribute to the Gresley's abilities that this record should still be held by this magnificent A4 Pacific. Number 6, 7 was actually named after Sir Nigel Gresley and appears here on the Great Central Railway. Gresley's V2, or Green Arrow class, was a heavy general purpose mainline locomotive intended for fast freight. But they were capable of almost any task which was asked of them. 184 V2 prairies were built between 1936 and 1944. During the war, they were invaluable on the additional traffic over the East Coast mainline and have occasionally been described as the engines which helped win the war. Also putting in an appearance at the Worth Valley is a visiting locomotive, the Great Marquis, a K4 class mogul, introduced by Gresley in 1937. Number 3442 was outshopped from Darlington in 1938 and spent most of her life working the West Highland Line from Glasgow to Fort William and the Lake.
1963, the Great Marquis was bought from British Rail by Lord Lindsay, and after repairs and restoration, found a new home on the Severn Valley Railway. The Severn Valley is one of Britain's longest preserved railways, and a 16-mile run from Kidderminster to Bridge North gives these mighty engines a chance to stretch their legs and let off some steam. During the war, Britain's railways came under the control of the War Department, and the Ministry of Supply appointed R.A. Riddles to design a new freight engine which would be quick to build and powerful. Dame Vera Lynn is a War Department Class 2100, built in 1943, a stretched version of the more numerous 280s. The extra driving wheels spread the axle load and gave greater route availability. Number 3672 was delivered to Egypt in 1944 and later sold to the Greek railways. After repatriation, the engine was named Dame Vera Lynn. Since 1989, she's been in regular traffic on the North York Moors Line.
In 1948, British Railways was created from the nationalization of the Big Four. The new chief mechanical engineer, R.A. Riddles, was faced with the task of rebuilding a railway which had been war damaged and neglected. His plan was to replace all the older engines with a standard range of locomotives. The first to appear was Britannia, number 70000. This large 7P class Pacific was built in 1951 for mainline work. It performed well and 54 more were added to the roster. Only two survived, including the original, performing here at Old Oak Common. The British Rail standard designs drew on the best work and practices of the Big Four. They were built for maximum simplicity, route availability and sustained steaming. Standard components and ease of access also meant easier maintenance and servicing. The 4MT or mixed traffic class 460 was designed for universal operation over the entire British rail system. They were able to work the long distance cross country and semi fast trains that were once so common on our railways. Number 75078 was built in 1956. She was withdrawn only 10 years later and now operates on the Keithley and Worth Valley Railway. Number 75069, seen here at Dudley, normally resides on the Severn Valley, but in 1994 she also visited the West Somerset Railway. Number 80135 is a 4 MT tank engine. In 1945, Stanier and Fairburn developed Fowler's original 264 LMS tanks. After nationalization, this design was perpetuated with only slight modifications as a BR standard class. This was the largest tank engine in the British Rail Standard range and represented the final development of the British tank engine.
These engines were used almost exclusively for suburban passenger trains on the southern reach. Exeter Rail Fair saw a pair of preserved 4MT tanks working a special excursion along the Tarka line to Barnstable. Class 9F-210 O was the last of the 12 standard British rail designs. A swan song not just for heavy freight engines, but for all British steam. They appeared in 1954 and 251 were built, but the headlong rush to scrap steam meant that they had an extremely short working life. Black Prince was bought as scrap by David Shepard. To earn her keep, She's hired out to other lines, such as Peak Rail. She was in mint condition, actually, when I bought her in 1967. Now, that's one side of the coin, £3,000, but the money she's cost since in overhaul charges, I mean, every railway engine owner in the country will understand what I'm saying. It's now become horrendous, the amount of money involved in keeping these things going. Thank you. 